You welcome back and it's still Newsweek where we discuss the biggest stories that made the headlines in the week. Let's turn our attention to Nigeria where the Department of State Services, DSS, raided the residence and office of Tukuru Mamu following his arrest at the Aminu Kano International Airport on Wednesday. Mamu was involved in negotiation for the release of some of the hostage abducted in the March train attack in Kaduna. Tevison News correspondent Lupe Asom reports. Government, as a people, as organizations, we must, we must take seriously. Mamu Tuku's role as lead negotiator has resulted in the release of 40 out of the 63 passengers kidnapped by terrorists on the 28th of March. But on Wednesday morning, there were widespread reports of his arrest in Egypt. Mr. Mamu Tuku is also the media aide to Kaduna-based Islamic cleric, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi, and publisher of Desert Herald newspaper. Sources reveal he was immediately detained by the Interpol at the Cairo International Airport. This they say happened while he was waiting for a connecting flight to Saudi Arabia with his family, his alleged destination for the Lesser Hajj. In the last four years, communities and schools in Kaduna State have been in the direct line of fire by terrorists and armed bandits. Tributed Duno had the attack to ISWAP terrorists moving into the state from the northeast, and he had advocated for them to be bombed to death. But Mr. Mamo had been vocal about his opinion of the use of non kinetic measures in addressing this challenge. He has also led the negotiation processes when people were abducted and raised his voice when similar attacks occurred in other states. Reactions to his role have been mixed, and many have questioned who he is and what he represents. But those he has helped out of captivity, have at different times gone to thank him at his Kaduna residence. In the aftermath of the Kuje prison break, Mr. Tuku revealed that he had warned the federal government of the possibilities of such attacks. He also revealed the trained abductor's demand for a swap of the victims with their colleagues and children who were in the custody of the military. There are claims that Mr. Mamu's arrest may not be unconnected with orders from the federal government of Nigeria. Residents of Kaduna are also reluctant to air their views on an issue they fear may be tricky and beyond what is seen on the surface. It was also gathered that Mamu is expected to arrive at Minu Kano International Airport in Kano on Wednesday afternoon. Lupe Asom, TVC News, Kaduna. Well, joining me in the studio for more discussion on this is a political analyst and rights activist, Olufemi Lose. Good evening. Thank you for coming on the show. Now, uh, Nigerian authorities were not doing enough over the release of this victim, and that's exactly how uh, Mamu came to the um, um, limelight. And the question is, did you see or how do you see this, his arrest? On one hand, the arrest is inevitable, it's necessary, and I think it's important, particularly when you look at the point we have gotten to as a country in the war against terrorism. But on the other hand, it also serves as an opportunity to also expose the weakness of our natural, national security architecture. On the first hand, I mean commendable because you cannot, for God's sake, just assume that one individual, a non-state actor, is playing roles with so much audacity, you know, to the extent that, you know, it could interface freely, you know, with terrorists. It could, at some point, give ultimatum on behalf of terrorists concerning hostages and the likes. But on the other hand, like I said. It's an exposure of the failure of our national security because as a country, we have to rely on characters like Mamu to actually know the states of hostages, the level of you know, terrorist attacks, and sometimes you know, get information about the likelihood mm -hmm. of terrorist attacks. Of course, if you recall, if you follow these activities, he has spoken about of course, the likelihood of the invasion of Kuji correctional facilities, which, of course, eventually confirmed after the attack. And these are, you know, fundamental issues of how well this country has really taken the business of national security. Because 
why would the state empower a non-state actor to the extent that not only is he interfacing between families of victims of terrorism, but also you know, became a media personality to the extent that he practically issued statements on behalf of these groups. And you know, the country was looking so helpless. The security authorities were behaving as if we were in a normal situation. So it's commendable that he has been arrested. But at the same time, we should also you know, agree that it was a fundamental failure of our national security for such characters to have been elevated to the point that they could be playing that role. All right, some um, relatives of the remaining uh, victims, the train, um, abducted train uh, passengers, uh, accusing the gov government of making this arrest in a hasty manner, saying it could jeopardize uh, the release of their loved ones. Let me have your thought on this. You, you cannot really blame them. They blame them. They are really in a desperate situation. And you see, it's an indictment, and I'll keep saying this, that citizens have to repose more confidence in a non-state actor, in a character that is running you know, an enterprise with the terrorist organizations, than the state, which ordinarily should be responsible you know, for their security. It is ordinarily expected of the states, the Nigerian states, to give assurances to these families about how soon they can be reunited with their loved ones who are in captivity. But it looks like the state has become so helpless, and families now have to rely on non-state actors like Mamu. And you see, you cannot also blame this on some of the you know, department of our state security, because they have limits to their roles. They have you know, roles to play as far as getting hostages rescued and the likes are concerned. But the truth is that where is a national security advisor in all this, who ordinarily, primarily, should be playing such roles like that characters like Mamu and Co are playing. All right. Thank you very much for your contribution so far, Mr. Law, saying as usual. But let me put your hood on that so we'll get to move to other, uh, our last story for tonight. While we go down to that um, issue, uh, the Minister of Education, Adam Adamu, says the federal government can only afford 23.5% salary increase for university workers and 35% uh, for professors. This was part of the fallout of the meeting in Abuja between government, pro-chancellors and vice-chancellors of federal universities amid, um, aimed at finding lasting solutions to the ongoing strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. TVC News correspondent Helen Osamade Akint reports. For the past six months, students of Nigerian public universities have been at home following the inability of the federal government and the Academic Staff Union of Universities to reach an agreement. In its effort to resolve the strike, the federal government set up the NIMI BRICS Committee to look into the 2009 federal government ASU agreements, but the committee's report was rejected. The federal government's decision to introduce the policy of no work, no pay made the union to extend its strike indefinitely. Academic staff union of universities and Today, the Ministry of Education meets with vice chancellors and pro chancellors of federal universities. The outcome of the meeting is the setting up of a 14 mark committee to look into areas where government has failed to reach a consensus with the union. Although no time frame is given as to when the committee is expected to come up with its reports, the government has promised that all grey areas will soon be resolved and lecturers will in no time resume work. Even uh, Briggs himself is part of this uh, uh, committee. Nobody has jettisoned it. It is in continuation of what the Briggs committee did, the offers that were made, what was accepted by ASU and what was not accepted. It's a continuation of the Briggs committee. We're on quick march towards early resolution of the problem. And in a very little while, the doors of our universities, those that are closed, will be open. The committee is made up of pro-chancellors, vice-chancellors, and heads of government agencies. No member of the academic staff funeral of universities is represented in this committee, which will be chaired by the Minister of Education. The committee is expected to submit the outcome of its report to President Mahmoud Buhari for further action.
Helen Osamede Ekins. CBC News, Apucha. Well, I still have in the studio political analyst and rights activist Lufemi Lawson. Uh, quickly before we go, because we are out of time, right? Uh, Minister of Education Adamo Adamo believes uh, the proposed salary increases is unrealistic, is, is, not, is even out of tune with the current uh, economic um, crisis or situation. Reality, What's your thought on that? Well, I think to start with, the minister's attempt to elevate a minor issue above the major issues on the ongoing crisis is not really so good because, of course, I'm not sure it is the issue of salary increase for lecturers that is the major component of the agreement. And we must begin to query you know, the sincerity of government on this issue. You know, the minister just set up a 14-man committee, you know, including pro-chancellors, vice-chancellors, members of some institutions, and no member of the union that you're in dispute with is on that panel of 14. And you see, we cannot continue to set up committees after committees. The Ministry of Labor spent a lot of months addressing this issue. So many committees in the past will become this committee. And the, for how long are we going to be setting up committee to discuss an agreement that we reached over 13 years ago? Why not move to the stage of you know, implementation? This was an agreement between two parties, the government and the union. Why continually creating committees which will eventually not lead us out of this current situation. I think the government must, for once, be sincere in its approach at solving this issue. For God's sake, you cannot keep the students at home for over seven months and continue to set up committees. So the government must look beyond setting up committees and look at if, you know, implementing some of this agreement. It has also confirmed and agreed to do. The minister in the last meeting said, from the first quarter, the government will be releasing 150 billion as part of the, of course, the agreement and 50 for remunerations. And the question is, why do we have to wait for the first quarter of 2023? In the same country, where in less than two hours, the National Assembly approved a supplementary job budget of about one billion dollars for the military to procure arms and ammunition. Why are we so relegating education? And we are not really seeing the closure of our universities for several months as a national emergency. It is very, very unfortunate. And I think where we are now, it's not the time to keep setting up more committees and committee than rather the government should move to the stage of implementation and look at how it can begin to implement the content of this agreement that was not made by us, but by both parties, of course. All right, in a minute, Lawson, before we go, what do you think would take uh, for a resolution to be reached as soon as possible in resolving this crisis? The re it's very straightforward. Federal government must begin an implementation of its agreement with ASU, and if government will seek a review, it's not going to be achieved by setting up some committees that does not involve ASU. Federal government must be ready to sit with ASU and look at areas of you know, soft landing for both parties and let these universities be reopened. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawson, uh, Femi. Thank you for coming on the it's show. My and thank you for being part of the show as well. And that's our show for today. Remember, you can follow the conversation on our social media platform, Ativist News NG, or on our website, ativistnews.tv. I am Jacinta Obiuku. Until next week, it's goodbye. <laughs>